So here we have a solution of 1.26 spe specific gravity is what I came up with. Um, it's at 10 inches high and it's starting to cool down. So as uh, temperature does affect specific gravity uh, testing devices, you have to adjust accordingly. That's the main thing to know about them. The water, when you, when you take it out, and I'm just telling you from previous experience and things that I've done, I don't have everything here. Uh, at the moment, but I can tell you that if you do take the temperature of your water, your solution, I'm sorry, uh, as it's in the tank, it's going to be you know any from anywhere from 93 and a half to 95 degrees, and as you take it out, it'll start cooling down within about a minute. And you can find out you know how to adjust your your specific gravity according to temperature and the reading that you get uh, of the solution that you're testing it in uh, by contacting the manufacturer, or you can there's you can get a general idea by looking at scales online. Uh, the important thing to know is that it's really not that much difference between, uh, you know, what they're set at at 70 degrees and then getting it up to, you know, 90 degrees. Basically, uh, from what I can tell is there's uh, a rise in specific gravity of like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So um, it's, it's not like a huge uh, thing to worry about. But uh, one thing that you can do if you're, if you're the person testing the solution, if it's your own tank or it's your, your float center, you can get the idea in one tank of, of how it is for you. And, and as long as you're doing the same consistent test methods in the same amount of time at the same temperature, and you get the same reading that works for you while you're in the tank, then you can adjust all your tanks to that same one, um, or at least find that baseline of where you want to go with it. All right, with that said, there's a few different hydrometers that are out there. Uh, there's the squeeze top, which we don't use because they're not accurate for us. They just don't work for us. And for some people they do and they're safe um, as far as like dropping it and not getting any glass or anything like that on the floor. They're plastic, so that's really cool. But um, for me personally, I can tell you that there's a difference between the specific gravities. And if I don't have it where I like it, I'm nitpicky and I don't enjoy my float as much. So that's why over here at the float tank shop, we always use these uh, type of hydrometers that are usually made of glass. Um, on, the, on the end, there's a whole different end on the electronic end where they use uh, digital versions and that's, they make one now. Uh, I believe it's called the Tilt and I believe it's around $200. It's a digital version, we've never used it. Uh, the, the one thing that holds us back from using it at least right now is it's new and it's electronic so it might break that way. And also it's expensive. So with that said, these are what we stuck with and I'm going to start off from uh, the smallest version and how that worked out. You may know about the float scepter, which we created to stop or help prevent breakage of these types of hydrometers, these small guys right here, which you can find at automotive shops and they're basically just a battery tester, but the specific gravity works the same for float tanks. So uh, yeah, they're really fragile really fragile they usually break for a lot of people and on this end right here that's where lead shot is so basically um, a bunch of little lead balls are in there so when you break it they fall apart they get all over and that is not cool that's not good you got to clean that up and nobody wants to be cleaning up lead so we created this little thing called the float scepter and how this works is you just unscrew the top this guy slides right in it and then when you're using it to test, uh, yeah, I'll just show you. You just dip it to those two little dots right there, pull it out. And we tested this, the cylinder size, it can make a difference on your reading. We made sure we made the cylinder big enough so when you use this, you'd get the correct reading. And it just shows you your reading right there. You can uh, stick your thumb in here, like so, and move it to the numbers. It's hard to see, it's not focusing, I understand, but. Uh, that's the gist of it. So then you just put your thumb on it like so, dump the water back in. Like so you put your top on, or you rinse it out when you're done, obviously. And then you put your top on and that'll seal it. So now you have a good grip on it. You can take it around wherever you need to. Um, it's not likely to slip out of your hands. If you put it on the table, it has four corners. So it's not going to roll on you. And it has a weight on the bottom that's also going to try to just make it stick to one one spot like that so there's a lot of advantages to using the float scepter it worked really well for us um it didn't prevent all breakages but when there was a break there was no mess so that that it worked really well for us and we really like this but we're not going to make it anymore because we found something better 
Um, so this is no longer going to be for sale. This is uh, a type of hydrometer that's a little bit bigger, probably more accurate, I guess a lot of people would say. Um, just to let you know, the, uh, the car type uh, that I just showed you in there in the float scepter, the little ones, we did test over 24 of those in the same batch of solution. They all read the exact same, um, except for one because it was defective. So um, they're not, they're, they're, they're pretty good for accuracy. And here's kind of like the more scientific one. The more higher up one, this is probably around 50 bucks or something like that. It's got the lead shot in it like that. Um, easy to read numbers and it's a little bit bigger. So I don't know, it works for some people. Um, but the, what we found here that we really, really like is this guy. And this we got for just under a hundred dollars. And this is a polycarbonate shatterproof hydrometer. It's made of plastic. You can see there's some bend in it like that. I feel there's no, me doing this, I don't feel like it's gonna break at all. Now I, could, I feel like I could just go like this and crack it, okay? But it has tons of bend to it. This part is heavy, more heavy duty. This is like really strong. I can't like push it in or anything like that. This is not lead, this is steel shot. So you don't have to worry about any lead or anything like that if you break it, if it does break. Um, I've dropped this on the carpet. You know, a few times, but I mean, I know I could do a few hundred. This thing's never going to break dropping it on a carpet. Um, I feel like if you have vinyl flooring, it would never break on that. Um, and even like that fake hardwood flooring, I'd, I'd, you know, unless you really smash it hard, but it says it's shatterproof. I'm not going to test it because I really like it and I want to keep it. Um, but I definitely wanted to let everybody know about this. There's three different types that you can get. There's three different companies, but uh, this is a Durac D-U-A-R-C hydrometer. If you Google 1.2 to 1.42, you're going to get a few different versions of the same hydrometer. Just make sure you write in uh, hydrometer 1.2 to 1.42 and then write polycarbonate. And you're going to get a, you know, a variety of, of different hydrometers that you can get. This is 10 inches of water right here. And we're reading at about 1.24. So anything higher than that, you know, you're going up like this. So as long as you have 10 inches of water in there, you can get down to 1.24 specific gravity and you're going to have plenty of room to get your reading. It's really big, nice letters or numbers. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, nice yellow there to, to kind of reflect the, the numbers back to you. Really nice hydrometer. Might want to check it out. Thanks for watching.